Hi and welcome to Shine Channel and today we're going to be learning about the communion. Um, <clears throat> so you may have heard of this word. Um, the communion is basically done um, traditionally um, in the church around Easter time and what it is is um, <clears throat> it's about celebrating and remembering Jesus' sacrifice as he died for us for our sins. Um, but I want to go ahead and teach a little bit more about the communion so that we understand that this doesn't just have to be done um, at church or even on Easter in April. This actually should be done very often um, and Jesus asks us to do it often in remembrance of him. So today I want to go ahead and share uh, what is the communion, what does it mean? Um, why do we do it and how do we do it okay so let's go ahead and start by getting our Bibles we're gonna go ahead and read chapter 22 of Luke we're gonna read 19 through 20 and he took bread Jesus he took bread gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them his disciples saying this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in, in my blood, which is shed for you. <clears throat> so, right here, this is actually where the communion comes from. This is the Lord's Supper. Um, and this is right before he is about to become, you know, get crucified. So, this is, now we're going to explain more about the bread and um, the cup and what all that means. Um, but this is actually how um, we, this is actually what we read when we do communion and how we do communion. We um, get, you know, bread and then we get a cup. Um, some people use wine, um, some churches use, you know, grape juice, but... The point is the drink um, representing Jesus. So, Jesus' blood. Uh, so here, you know, in, the, in the verse 19, it says, Do this in remembrance of me. So this is also in verse 20, we see that he's calling this a new covenant. So, the communion, what is it? It was started, obviously, by Jesus as a remembrance of his sacrifice for us and the new covenant he's making um, between God and us. So uh, let's go ahead and continue reading Luke chapter 22, but let's read 28 through 30. You are those who have continued with me in my trials, and I bestow upon you a kingdom just as my Father bestowed one upon me that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So this is also part of the new covenant that God has made through Jesus. Um, Jesus is making this covenant with us about sitting with him and <clears throat> sitting with him in his kingdom. Um, so this is a representation of us also sitting with Jesus in his kingdom and eating with him um, when he becomes the rightful sovereign king and lord of all at his return. Uh, so let's go ahead and read after, uh, let's go ahead and read Hebrews 10. We're actually going to reflect more about the covenant made in um, what the communion means. So Hebrews 10, 16, 16 through 17. This is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds and will write them. Then he adds their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Now, where there is remission of these, there is no longer an offering for sin. So this is actually talking about the covenant. And um, what it is is about him. Jesus is fulfilling the law. Fulfilling the law 
and um, taking our sins away and writing his um, writing his laws in our hearts so that we can live for him in a righteous manner uh, so this is the covenant actually this is what it's talking about so we're making that covenant once we take communion we're partaking of the covenant made with Jesus and God and then let's read Matthew 26 to get better understanding and that's going to be Matthew chapter 26 verse 26 through 29 And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many of the remission of sins. But I say to you that I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. So, um, so he's saying the bread is my body and the, the cup represents my blood for the new covenant. So what have we learned so far? The, the communion, communion is actually um, the Lord's Supper that he gave to his disciples in representation of his sacrifice and the new covenant. So his blood was shed for this new covenant um and as you see you know with the covenant it's an agreement with people um but a whole uh, godly covenant was was with the the shedding of blood and in this case was jesus and then his body obviously he died physically his death for us in our place um so now how do we actually actually why why do we do communion so in faith as we know as the bible teaches us faith without actions is dead so there's no point in saying you believe in something if you don't actually act upon it because if you did believe it you would actually act on it so this is our way this is our act of our worship toward jesus and um our physical like a bat like the baptism is a physical representation baptism in water well this is the communion is a physical representation and is our physical action in actually taking part in that covenant um, not just remembering you know now we do we do this in remembrance of him because Jesus does ask us do this in remembrance of me so it is an, an actual commandment that he gave us um, but it's not just about remembering, but physically acting upon and sealing yourself into the covenant with God and with Jesus. Um, consuming the body and drinking the blood now, of course, isn't actually Jesus' body. and It's not actually his blood. It was, it's bread and it's, um, the cup was, you know, the wine. But he says this is... he's he's a uh, he's saying that the bread represents his body and that the cup represents his blood in the new covenant so um what he means by eating the bread or eating or drinking the the um the cup is that you're receiving you're consuming so you're you're receiving <laughs> um you're receiving the you're receiving his sacrifice is what I mean you're actually receiving his sacrifice into you and receiving his blood you're you're receiving him into you um, becoming one pretty much you're becoming one with him so let's go ahead and go to John chapter 6 and we'll read verse 48 through 58 I am the bread of life. 
your fathers ate the, ma the manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. The bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is the food indeed, and my blood is the drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. So, um, just again, it is a this really is Jesus kind of breaking down um, what is actually represented in the the Last Supper as the covenant. He's actually breaking it down to them. What is this actually representing? What does it actually mean? Now, they took it literally like, we're eating your flesh or drinking your blood. No, not, not literally his literal body. It's, it's um, spiritual edification. So, spiritually, you're consuming him. Spiritually, you are receiving his sacrifice, which was his body that was, you know, um, sacrificed and then you are receiving spiritually his blood shed over you for your sake to be in to be um made one into the new covenant and and like he says you know when you eat of my flesh and you drink my blood which is the new covenant um then which is what we do with the communion once you do that you're living as one with the Father. Like he says, you know, the Father lives in me. I come to live in you, and, and the Father comes to live in you. So you end up living forever because that covenant is, is you're part of that covenant now. So, again, in the communion, um, it is an act of remembrance because he asks us to do this in remembrance of me, which is such a lovely thing to do because when you realize what Jesus went through um, it you know it's really nice to just remember what he did for us um, but also um, along with the remembrance it's also about becoming one with him in, a, in that covenant so a communion is the communion the last supper um, is actually very holy in like a really serious act is a very sacred act um, and I don't think people realize just how holy and sacred it is because I think people do it on tradition um, but actually what we're going to find out in a few minutes is that the Bible you know Paul the apostle actually talks about why we shouldn't actually do it unless we actually mean it because it isn't it's actually a very serious you're 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 taking part in the covenant okay you don't when you're taking part in a covenant or anything spiritually binding like that that's nothing to take light it's a very serious matter so I just wanted everybody to realize how serious the communion actually is and what it actually means that you're doing. Um, so really you should only do this if you, you know, you've already accepted Jesus in your life and you're actually, you know, you're ready to live for him, like completely um, and seriously. Um, okay, so... <clears throat> Oh, and the other thing is, you know, some people, there's different religions, um, like some people believe it's 
actually eating the flesh and this and that. It's not. Um, you know, and, and we can see that as we just read it. And also, some people think, you know, only certain people should take the communion, but that's not true either, as you can see, because he just said, unless you actually consume, um, it, unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, then you're not going to have life in you forever. So everybody should take part in the communion who is serious about Jesus. Everybody should you know, eat the bread and drink the of the cup in resemblance because that's your way of having that eternal life. So, um, there's, you know, doctrines that say only certain people should do it or, um, you know, it's really his actual body, you know, whatever. Um, those are not, those are not in accordance to what the Bible is teaching us. I just wanted to make that clear so we don't have confusion. Um, okay, so then third thir third of all, how do we do the communion? Okay, so you're serious and you really are sure that you want to make, you know, yourself one with Jesus and God and, and take part in the covenant that he gave you for new life. Um, that's amazing, but let's make sure that we're doing it as he wants us to. So we, um, what we do is we give prayer of thanks um, for the Son of God, which is Jesus, offered for us, and the life that Jesus laid down for us. Um, we break the bread in remembrance of Jesus' physical death and suffering on our behalf, and then we eat the bread, which is resembling our receiving Jesus' death and sacrifice and becoming one with him in his covenant, which is when we drink of the cup, that represents us receiving the blood he bled on our behalf to become one in the covenant of forgiveness that he died for us to partake in. Um, and we also must examine ourselves, as I mentioned before, you know, uh, let's examine ourselves and make sure that we're actually doing this with a true heart and in a sacred manner. Um, after all, you're committing yourself to the sacred covenant with God, um, so it's nothing to be unsure about or half-hearted about. If you are, I wouldn't take it. Um, it needs to be very true matter. So let's go ahead and read 1 Corinthians 11, because this will kind of help us understand better. So that's 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 28. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and he had given thanks. He broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, wh whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord is an unworthy... I'm sorry, uh, Verse 27, Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an, uh, in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep which he actually talk, uh, when he says sleep he's actually talking about had died for if we judge ourselves we would not be judged but when we are judged we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world so um, in saying all that you know it's talking about examining yourself because again when you're doing this you're, this is actually the act of the covenant that Jesus created. So, 
it's not something to be if you do this in an unworthy manner as it said you're you are putting guilt on yourself for Jesus's body and blood so that's pretty serious so again just emphasizing it's a very serious matter so only do it if you really are sure and wholehearted for Jesus um and then uh, we can go ahead and go to uh, back to First Corinthians chapter 10 and read 14 through 22. Um, the reason I want to read this one is also because when we are taking communion, um, as we mentioned, this is also representing eating at the Lord's table in God's kingdom. So we are committing our lives to Jesus forever. In everlast, in everlasting life, um, and in saying that, when you take part of a covenant to God, you cannot be tied to other gods. And when you come to know God, um, you learn about that because he he says that there should be no other gods before me. So you're not allowed to be serving other gods or other ways of life I guess you can say like religions um, you have to be wholeheartedly solely on on Jesus on God and on the way that he teaches you to live um, so if you have ties with pagan tradition or um, other deities or you know rituals um, or demonic ties or anything these have to be cut and severed before you can partake in eating at the table with God um, or partaking in his covenant even so yeah let's read chapter 10 of 1 Corinthians it's 14 through 22 Therefore, my beloved, free from idolatry, I speak as to wise men, judge for yourselves what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless is not the communion, um, I'm sorry, the cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we, though many, are one bread in one body, for we all partake of that one bread. Observe Israel after the flesh At, are not those who eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar what am i saying then that an idol is anything or what is offered to idols is anything rather that the things which the gentiles sacrifice they sacrifice to demons and not to god and i do not want you to have fellowship with demons you cannot drink of the cup of the lord and the cup of demons you cannot partake of the Lord's table and the table of demons. Or do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? So, again, this is just going over how you can't have your foot in both sides. It has to be one or the other. Um, so, when you are going to take communion, just realize that that means you're going to be choosing God. And, and severing any ties with any other pagan uh, ritual tradition, you know, any other deity or demonic um, ties that you have, that you may have. Um, you can't, you can't serve in the spirit or spirits of, you know, that are not of God. You have to choose one or the other. Um, so, in summary, um, oh, and also, you can do this with other people. I mean, the, the apostles did, they did this with other people. So, please, you know, don't do it alone. This is it's better when, with other people, with your, you know, your sisters and brothers in Christ. So, um, 
in summary, the communion is very sacred. It's it's actually a representing um, you're remembering Jesus' sacrifice, which he died for you. So it's very serious. And then also um, you're partaking in a covenant that he shed his blood for. Um, and so you're becoming one with God and with his covenant. Um, and so it's an act of worship. And he asks us to do this often. So we do this in remembrance of him very often. And then we, we give prayer. We thank God for his son and Jesus for his life that he gave for us. And then we break the bread and eat it um, in remembrance of Jesus' um, physical death. And then we drink of the cup, which is consuming his, you know, um, representing our cons consuming or receiving his blood, which is shed for the covenant. So we're becoming one in the covenant. And um, just make sure that you are wholehearted about it before you do this and that you take it with all seriousness and that you always remember um, what Jesus did for us. And of course, share with everybody you know. All right, thank you so much again for joining me today and learning about Jesus and learning about the communion. Um, and. I ask that you share this with everybody you know so that we can all enjoy eternal life with our Savior Jesus. Thank you and have a blessed day.